Good morning to you. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, well, you are on time for the first conversation of the day around career. And we have an interesting one for you today. We are talking about finding that X factor, particularly yours. And uh, for that discussion, we are joined by Anthony Washira, who's a leadership transition coach to help us through this conversation. And remember, you can interact with us uh, through our socials at y 4 channel using the hashtag Y in the morning. Washira, Mr. Washira, welcome. Thank you very much. Glad to have you with us. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Okay. Yes. So we want to get into this particular topic to understand it. What is your X factor? Wow. Uh, a good place to begin. And mm. uh, seeing as we are talking about careers, yeah. your X factor is what distinguishes you from everybody else. And everybody has uniqueness. Everybody has unique strengths. Everybody has unique passions. And everybody has their unique personal core values. If you are able to leverage those, the three of those, and uh, find an intersection of those, you find your sweet spot. You find what you can do better than most people where you work. You find what you love uh, more than most people. Uh, mm -hmm. Really, what you love is uh, what you enjoy, your passion. And then your values kind of help you create boundaries. Uh, they help you know what you can do, mm -hmm. how far you can go in certain situations, and where you cannot go. So that, in a, an abridged version, is your X factor. Okay. Yes. Quite interesting. So would you say that people who mostly um, feel lost, uh, it's usually because they don't know their X factor, they have not gotten these th three things. You've said core value, uh, their strength, if I'm not wrong, the third one? Passion. Passion, strength, yes. core value, and passion. So is it because they have not identified these three? Yes, in some cases, uh, it's a yes. If some of us are stuck in jobs that we don't like, mm -hmm. some of us work for people we cannot stand. So if you are, one of the best way to describe it is like trying to fix a square peg in a mm -hmm. round hole. You are in a place that you don't, you don't like working there. Yeah. Uh, there is a problem there already. Uh, you might also find that you are working in an area that is not in your strength. So your strengths are in communication, but you are in a factory hauling boxes or doing logistics, something like that. Or in a bank. Or in a bank, mm -hmm. yes. So yes, you might have this good job, but you're not fulfilled. You're not, you're not able to give your best because you you're not passionate about that, mm -hmm. and your strengths, your biggest strengths are not being used. So that kind of sometimes brings about a state where someone feels trapped, someone feels lost, someone feels like they are dissatisfied. Okay. Yes. And also, does it, uh, is it also the same thing as superpower? Because I was going through your website and you, you were using it almost interchangeably, mm -hmm. but maybe you can explain <laughs> what is a superpower and is it the X factor? Uh, all right. Thank you very much. So superpowers, according to me, are your strengths, your gifts. Uh, picture a superhero. And mm -hmm. uh, for our viewers, I, I am a fan of Marvel movies. And uh, Marvel movies, for me, yeah. they help me explain this very easily. The Avengers Endgame, the, that movie, when it was released, mm -hmm. uh, in a short while, it became the biggest grossing movie of, uh, the biggest grossing movie ever after it was released after a few months. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did they do? They created stories of different superheroes. These superheroes had different superpowers. Everybody had their movies and they had different superpowers. So you have mm -hmm. different superheroes uh, showcasing their different superpowers. Then when they get together, they're able to create uh, great magic because they're unique. They have uh, each, each is unique in their own way and each brings their superpower to the table to solve the problem that they had. In the very same way, superpowers are what you can do better than us, what you can do better than most of us. Mm -hmm. So when you bring that to your career, to your place of work, to whatever organization, and everybody else brings theirs, we're able to combine that and solve a problem pretty much like the Avengers did. So superheroes for me is what is your uniqueness? What is your strength? Mm -hmm. They could be gifts, they could be talents. Uh, 
and I dare say that uh, the biggest superpower that we have is our mindset because if we are able to switch this to, to change it mm -hmm. uh, to think that we can that's where it begins but we all do have uh, different strengths that we bring to the table okay so everyone has a superpower that's clear now because yes. this has a strength that you bring on and it's unique from any other person yes all right yeah. and the mindset let's speak a, a little bit about that why is it important to have a positive mindset and what does it do to you Henry Ford said this that uh, if you think you can you're right if you think you can't you're right mm. so your mindset pretty much determines what you can and cannot do. If you think you can't, you're correct. So you will act in accordance to how you think. You think. Mm -hmm. So you manifest that uh, it becomes, it, 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 it dictates your behaviors and your habits, mm -hmm. which in turn also now dictate the results that you get. So if you change your mindset, if you start looking at the world in a different way, then you start behaving differently. And when you start behaving differently, you start getting different results. Okay. So, yeah. And how easy or hard is that? Because it's hard for, you know, for someone who has been raised in a particular environment to think in a particular way as much as you want to, mm -hmm. but things are not working <laughs> out. So how, how do you get yourself to change that mindset? You really want to, but everything around you says, no, this, you know, I'm going down and, you know, up is not the way. I like that. How you get to change is not easy because mm. we are a product of uh, nature and nurture. So we have mm. our personalities. So sometimes our personalities stand in the way. Uh, nurturing is what we have been exposed to, perhaps uh, parentage, so the schools we went to, the environment that we have been exposed to, those kind of straight jacketers. Mm -hmm. However, there is a powerful force that is called choice. If you are willing to learn, if you are willing to unlearn, if you are willing to receive instruction and make small incremental changes every day. And one of the ways that I propose is get a mentor. Get into groups that challenge you to do better. Get mm -hmm. a coach. Yeah. It, it's not uh, an easy fix, but small incremental steps, uh, getting help, like getting a coach, like mm -hmm. getting a mentor, like being in the, in the right forums, you will make steps into seeing the world in a different way. But mm -hmm. it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of effort. And we'll come back to that later on, getting a mentor. Mm -hmm. But now, how do you find your X factor now getting to your strengths, knowing your core values, and um, why do I keep on forgetting the third way? <laughs> passion. Core values, passion. All passion. Right. Yeah. So how do you get all that? So... Uh, at the risk of sounding like I'm selling, uh, at the Influential, uh, my organization, we help people do that. We help them discover their strengths. We help them discover, more like uncover, because you have them, mm -hmm. more like uncover your strengths and your passions and your core values. However, mm -hmm. one of the ways that you can find your strengths is by looking at your life and see the things that you actually do better than most people. You can do a 360 assessment yourself. Mm -hmm. What do I know that I do better than most people? then you can ask people that you work with. You can ask people that you live with, like family, people that know you very well. Okay. What do you see that I do better than most people? What do I get complimented for? So you can f begin finding your strengths. Uh, if it, it's a place of work, you keep getting compliments because of doing something better than most people. So you can figure that out. Mm -hmm. uh, passion is tricky. Seeing as some of us studied things that we did not want to study. We were mm -hmm. uh, parents in their great love and their direction sometimes misdirect us. True. They think that this course, if you take this course, if you go this stand route, a chance you stand a better thing. chance. Mm -hmm. But they kill your dreams. They kill your, your, your passion. So you end up going this route. But what you really like is this other one. Mm -hmm. So finding your passion requires... Uh, many things as well. So it's also kind of a 360. Find out what interests you. Find out what you like talking about. Find out what you like reading about. Find out what really interests you. Mm -hmm. And then you'll start, you'll start discovering a pattern of things that you really enjoy. Now, disclaimer. Passions sometimes mm -hmm. may not turn into a career. Uh, and uh, that does not mean that you can find your X factor in that sense. They may be something that you want to do after work. They can be a hobby. Mm -hmm. However, there are people who are also very creative. They have figured out how to 
find what it is that they love to do in that place where they are. They may not have, ne you see, they were sent in a wrong industry, quote unquote, but if you are creative enough, you might find a way of blending your passion into that, into that. work. Okay, yes. and that makes it easy. And that makes your day easy. That makes you, you, you enjoy part of your, because you can ask yourself, fine, mm -hmm. what is it about this job that I really enjoy? And then if you work in a place where you can be able to reorganize some things, you can ask for some reorganization so that you are spending time doing something that you really enjoy, which helps you give your all, which helps you mm. uh, perform better. And uh, if it happens to, merge, to, to align also with your strengths, you are more productive. You're doing something that you're really good at and that you really enjoy. All right. Yeah. Interesting. And what is the place of influence in finding your X factor? I like this. So, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Uh, influence. I like influence. Um, and uh, our, uh, my organization is called the Influential. Uh, very interesting yeah. question there. Uh -huh. So, influence uh, is the ability to persuade somebody mm -hmm. to do something. It's a, it's a power to, to change something. And if you are, whether you are senior or not, if you are doing something that you are good at, mm -hmm. you do it well. If you are doing something that you are good at and that you love, you do it even better. Now, if you are doing something mm -hmm. that you are good at, that you love, and your convictions, your values are aligned, then you are doing something really, really special. Mm -hmm. What happens when, that, when you find that sweet spot is that uh, you create great impact and you have the ability to persuade, to influence up, sideways, and even and even downwards Be yes because you you don't have to force your actions speak louder than words you have the ability to petition maybe mm -hmm. you lead a department and all those things have aligned if you want funding for something say a team building for your team if you need money for expansion or for something like that you're able to influence even your seniors because we hit targets we are engaged we are switched on Mm -hmm. We are pretty much what you want us to be, and a little more. So if we need something, it's easier for us to persuade you. If you look at the converse, supposing we are not hitting targets, supposing we are not engaged, supposing we mm -hmm. are uh, complaining. Okay. You might be wanting, if you're the boss, you might be wanting to get rid of us. You might be wanting to change this department, to switch it up. Mm -hmm. But if we are doing, if we are not a headache to you, we are a uh, there's that principle of pain and pleasure. We are pleasure to you. Okay. And consciously, we, we create, we, we, we help you to release the feel good hormones when you see us. So we influence <laughs> you indirectly. <laughs> okay, so yeah. that's also influence. Yes, we so create it's influence. It's not all about uh, the title, it's about using what you have. It is about using what you have. And uh, pretty much that's, that's what we believe at the influential that uh, you can be influential at any, any level. You don't have to have a title. If you have found your X factor, if you have found mm -hmm. your strengths, they speak on your behalf. If you have found that and your passions, they speak on your behalf. Look around you. Uh, think about one of the people that I really like is Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. Mother Teresa had no title really, but her influence is felt to date. Yeah. She was uh, mm -hmm. very humble, lived in a uh, uh, place that not many of us would have wanted to, to, to work at. Mm -hmm. the, her environment was not the best place to work, but her influence is so great because she found her X factor. She found something that she, she believed in. X factor. Yes. Okay. Talk about core values because that's the third thing that you've mentioned. There's passion, the strengths, and core values. Mm. Talk, about, talk about core values. So every organization has got core values, mm. and uh, core values really define what we do every day. Mm -hmm. So... As individuals, sometimes we don't realize it, but we do have our individual core values. Yeah. So you have values that you live by. You have uh, values that dictate what you do. Uh, take, for example, how you choose to dress. It's a choice. Uh, and uh, we have had that issue with ladies and my dress, my choice. I dress, my story. choice. <laughs> so yes. Yes. So uh -huh. uh, let me use that example. How I choose to dress is based on uh, something I believe. Mm -hmm. So some of us believe that wearing some short dresses is not okay. So that's, if that's my conviction, if that's what I believe, mm -hmm. then that's what I believe. So I will not wear short dresses. Some of us believe 
that mm -hmm. uh, that if, if I'm riding in a car with a person of the opposite gender, if they're not my wife, they will ride in the back or I will ride in the back. I've seen people like that. Okay. And that's okay because that's, that's their core value. That's, that's a value they hold here. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm being a bit extreme here. But at the same time, you can have core values like, uh, for instance, I have a core value which is dignification. And I like saying it like that, dignifying people. So dignification means that uh, mm -hmm. if I find the person opening the gate for me, the, the soldier, Mm -hmm. I I treat him with respect. Okay. If I go to a hotel and uh, the waiter or the waitress serves me and makes a mistake, I treat them with respect, respect. just the same way I would want to be treated. So that's dignification. That's a value that I hold there. So if if some if I if I do if I act outside of that, I am acting out of integrity. I'm out of integrity, mm -hmm. and I need to get back to integrity. So everybody, you realize that you have core values, but you can figure out what your core values are. There's a way to figure out what they are if you're not sure what they are. So and what's the way of figuring out? What's the way of figuring out? So, yeah. so we help you look at your life and see if there are values that you have held on for life because there are some values that we are given by our parents that we carry through life. Mm -hmm. But as we get to the 20s, uh, when we're becoming independent, Sometimes we shed off some of those and pick up, pick on, pick up yes. values of our own. Mm -hmm. So core values can change depending on which season you are in your life. Okay. But not all of them. Some of them, they can go with you throughout mm -hmm. your life. But they can change because uh, some of the values that you might hold in high school it might change when you go to college, might change when you go to Get work. A job. Mm -hmm. So you figure out what you have valued. Then you also figure out what you have valued in the last one year or three months. And then you figure out what is it that you value right now so there's a way that we can help you figure that out but there's a way you can look at your life and see what have what values have i lived by and then of course you see which ones make me feel authentic and which ones make me feel inauthentic because mm -hmm. we are living at a time when we are influenced by so many things so many things mm -hmm. so sometimes we will act in accordance with values that are not ours because we want to please Others. the other person yeah okay so what is the place of authenticity in all this because you've brought that up Thank you. So uh, I believe that when you are living mm -hmm. within your core values, mm -hmm. uh, that is a place where you are you're, you're consistent with, with you, you do things that are inconsistent with uh, that are consistent with your values, and therein lies your authenticity. However, let mm -hmm. me add a few layers to that. Imagine you are living in uh, in in your core values, doing what you believe, being you everywhere. Uh, so that uh, how you feel inside is, is the way you show up. Basically, That's how we see you. Yeah. It's not, uh, you're not influenced by formal or by uh, some influencer somewhere. Mm -hmm. You are living you. You are being true to you. Mm -hmm. So you are comfortable. Then you have found something that you love to do. Okay. And you are operating in the areas of your strength. I believe you are totally authentic in that place. Your values make you authentic. Okay. So your work... You can find authenticity further in your work because you are doing what you love to do, not what we are making you do. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you're operating in the area of your strength. Remember we had said that when you're operating in an area where you're not strong, and uh, I have that experience, sometimes you show up in a very different way and you're underperforming. Uh, you know, Einstein said that if, you, we, 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 if we measure every animal, if we ask a fish to climb a tree, it, can. it, it looks... <laughs> It looks like a failure, you know. Yeah, but you put it but in water. But that's not in the air. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's, so it's inauthentic when it's trying to climb a tree. It's not built for climbing trees. Mm -hmm. So you need to find your area of specialty where, where your strengths yeah. are. And your authenticity just shows up. These are your real strengths. Mm -hmm. This is your passion and you're living within your values. You're okay. authentic. Wow, amazing. So now what is the difference between someone who knows that, who has found their X factor, mm -hmm. that is... I believe to summarize it is just that thing that makes you stand out from the rest. Uh, what is the difference between someone who has who knows their X factor and someone who hasn't? That is a fantastic question, and uh, I am saying that because there are some people who are very good learners and they're very good at surviving, mm -hmm. and they they might actually learn to do something and do it well but they are not thriving 
Mm -hmm. They're not thriving. They're not in their element. So how you know, I think one of the things is individual. Individual. I should mm -hmm. search myself. I should search myself. If I hit mm -hmm. my job, yeah. if I hit going to work, there is something there. What is the reason? Is it me or is it the place? There's, uh, there's something that needs to be addressed. It's, I, 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 would, I, I would challenge our viewers mm -hmm. to, to introspect. It's, it's a personal, it's a personal um, I'm lacking the words, but it's a personal, like, let me just use the word introspection. It is you who will know whether you are living mm -hmm. authentically. Okay. We may not know. Because some people will, will they, they, uh, they are survivors. You mm -hmm. keep them here, they will learn and they might impress. But inside, they are dying. But they are, they are good workers. They are trained to be good workers. Mm -hmm. So they can do a good job even when they are not enjoying the work. Okay. All right. Quite, quite interesting. Mm -hmm. And now there's something that uh, I saw on your site. Yep. You wrote, let me quote it. Mm -hmm. I use a coaching approach to uh, co-create enabling mindset skills and tools to leverage their superpowers. And uh, okay, I don't know if that exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, okay, so basically you have worked with different people from different continents and, you know, different countries. Are there people that you've seen are more, um, how do I put it, they're more receptive to this change, to getting to know uh, the X factor than others once they find out that they are a bit lost? Yeah, I'll give two groups. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll try to be politically correct. So okay. I think women, women know how to reinvent themselves and women in the, uh -huh. in the, at, at midlife, women mm. really know how to reinvent themselves. Okay. So that's a compliment to women. The other group that in my view mm -hmm. is teachable and that is ready to make the, the necessary changes mm -hmm. are young people. There's all this talk about millennials and Gen Z and a lot of shade is thrown that side. Mm -hmm. I happen to be a champion for that group. I, I think that group is ripe for direction, for mentoring, for coaching, for directing. Mm -hmm. If we have people who are patient enough to, to do it. Okay. Because they are, they are learners and they live in the information age. So they, they are, they are so flexible. So Gen Z and the women in the... The Gen Z and millennials. And I think that, oh. uh, that women have a, better, a bigger propensity than men, than men. to change. Okay, yes. uh, interesting facts yeah. there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now there's also something else. Uh, your life is like a TV series. I'm quoting this from the website. Mm. Uh, you should be the star uh, in the series. Your seasons are called Transitions. We can help you find your X Factor now and so much more. So your seasons are called Transitions. Yes. And you are, uh, you are a leadership transition coach. Yes. So maybe expound on this if it's related to Great, X -Factor. great, 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 great. Uh, and thank you for visiting my website. <coughs> <laughs> Welcome. So life is full of seasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a transitions coach, I help people navigate those seasons with mm -hmm. great success, with the, to create the greatest impact. So what I mean by saying that you should be the star in your seasons, uh, whoever is watching, I want them to think about their favorite show, <coughs> series. Mm -hmm. Uh, a favorite series that you like. Okay. So it's got different seasons. So your life is a lot like that. And some, 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 some seasons are predictable mm -hmm. or some transitions are predictable. Like uh, in this country, uh, now we have the new education system. But the 844, you knew that at uh, class 8, you get to do KCP, KCP. and then you then go you to high school. Mm -hmm. There's a transition there, going mm -hmm. from primary school to high school. Then you know that after four years, you get to do another exam and go to college. And after four years, you know that you get to graduate and go to the workplace. So th some transitions are very predictable, but you can see that life is really seasonal. There, there are seasons. And when you go to work, there are other seasons. Yeah. Uh, you get into your 20s, there's what we think we know about the 20s and so on and so forth, the 30s and 40s. So life is actually seasons. Mm -hmm. So as a transitions coach, you, I help people to navigate those seasons and navigate the transition in particular, the change, because the transition is the end of a season and the beginning, beginning of another. Mm -hmm. So besides those very predictable seasons, there are other, 
unpredictable seasons. Okay. Like losing a parent, nobody knows when they will lose someone. Like uh, losing a job for people who are in their workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes you can lose a job and lose a loved one. Sometimes you can uh, go through a difficult separation. You can go through a heartbreak. Mm -hmm. You can go through a promotion, a demotion. So there are other issues, other transitions that happen at an individual level. Yeah. At national level, we go through transitions. We are we have a new government. New leadership, yeah. At the global level, we went, uh, the pandemic hastened a transition that was happening. Now we have more people working from home. We have a lot of issues that have come as a result of the, the post-pandemic. Mm -hmm. So transitions are really seasonal. So because we are, we are in a different season than we were before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was happening, but it has now been accelerated by the pandemic. So as a transitions coach, I help people discover their X factor in that season okay. that they're in so they can do their best, they can be their best self and give the greatest impact. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. And as we come to a conclusion in this particular conversation, I want you to speak on impact because the real essence of knowing your X factor is to leave an impact, but some people don't really have that in mind or, you know, they're not really about impact. What is important of wanting having the will to leave an impact. All right. Wow. Thank you. I mm -hmm. subscribe to a school of leadership. I have a friend and he's my mentor. He's called Ed. Mm -hmm. Ed wrote a book and he says that leadership begins with, uh, uh, with initiative. When people, it begins when people take initiative to create a change that creates impact that matters. So for me, when you find your X factor and in whatever season somebody is in, mm -hmm. remember seasons are temporary, all of them. There's no permanent season. So you have to remember that you are leaving a legacy there. In whatever season that you're in, you're mm -hmm. leaving a legacy. And legacy is what you leave inside of people, not for them. It's what you leave inside mm -hmm. of them. Because mm -hmm. in that season you are with, you're going through a season with others. Or in fact, think about it even if it's a career progression, if you are a junior manager, you are managing people. If you are a mm -hmm. middle level manager, again, you're managing a different team and so on and so forth. So what's your legacy? What will you be remembered for? That's your impact. Who does it matter to? Mm -hmm. So for me, when I tell them, find your X factor, find your X factor, and then use that X factor to create impact that matters where you are in that season. Because mm -hmm. you are creating a legacy. I am creating a legacy where I am and so are you, and so is everybody else. Okay. We, we need to remember that. So we need to have that in mind, to want to leave a legacy where you are yes. in that particular season. And there's something that I was almost forgetting, mm -hmm. uh, importance of having a mentor. You mentioned that earlier on in the conversation. How does this help? Uh, okay, you said it helps in finding the X factor, but, you know, a little more into it. So when someone is looking for a mentor, I... Uh, Mm -hmm. believe that you need to get someone that you have chosen and you have chosen them for your reasons. These should be good reasons. Mm -hmm. I, wa I want to choose a mentor because they will challenge me to grow. I want to choose a mentor because I can ask them hard questions. I want to choose a mentor because they can ask me hard questions. Mm -hmm. I want to choose a mentor because I can mentor them too. It's called reverse mentorship. So for me to get a mentor, the, the way mentorship is working or mm -hmm. the way it should work, it's not a one-way Traffic. traffic. So I'm not there. A mentor is not a teacher. A mentor is a mentor. They show me, th they've been through what I'm going through. They have uh, walked this walk, so they know more than I do. Uh, but we are living in a time of some serious rapid change. Mm -hmm. This rapid change means that I might have experienced something that they haven't, and especially when it comes to technology. And okay. I'm speaking about someone now who's older than me. And uh, as, as I mentor someone, they are younger than me. They are more switched on than I am. Mm -hmm. So there, is things that I, there, are, there are things that they know that I do not know. So there is uh, interdependence. I learn from them as they learn from me. And in that learning, first of all, I am accountable. These people can ask, that person can ask me hard questions. And it's okay to have different mentors. One can be in your corporate life. One mm -hmm. can be in your personal life. One okay. can be in your spiritual life. You can have mentors from different fields because you're learning from them mm -hmm. and they will help you discover things because some of the strengths that we have are born 
or, or, or are exhibited when we go through difficulty. And sometimes it helps when someone asks you, so how did you get through that? And then you realize that you are very resilient. You didn't know that you are resilient. Okay. Yes. All right. And what, what sort of <coughs> relationship should you have with your mentor? How regularly, you know, for someone who doesn't have one and doesn't know how to navigate through it, mm -hmm. is it someone who's supposed to be very close? Can you just identify a mentor and someone you want to be mentored by and go to them and ask them for, for that? Uh, my view is mm -hmm. your mentor should be someone that you are fairly close to or someone that you will get fairly close to. Mm -hmm. Because if they are far away, and uh, we, do, we do say that someone has mentored me because I read their books and all, yeah. but there's no relationship there. A mentor is someone that you can call when you are in trouble, when you need to make a decision. It's someone that you can text if you, mm -hmm. if you are coming to sit here for an interview and you want, if, if I'm coming here to be interviewed and I wanted some in, input from my mentor, it's someone I can text. I'm talking about the X factor tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think is going on that I should, uh, among the young people that you think I should address? That, a relationship that is that mm -hmm. close that you can text them at some point to get pointers, okay. that you can text them, that you can call on them when you are stuck. Mm -hmm. So I believe that a mentor should be someone that you are close to or that you are going to get close to. All right. Yeah. Amazing. And I think that's a whole topic on it. So maybe we'll cover that someday. Mm. Uh, maybe what is your final say on this uh, from everything that you've said or around finding your X factor as we finally close it and then you'll mention your social media handles? So, I believe that everybody has their X factor. I believe that life mm -hmm. is full of transitions and different transitions sometimes will call or need different superpowers because you have an array mm -hmm. of your superpowers, you have different gifts. So, I think it is very important for everybody to find out what their superpowers are to figure out their X factor, their uniqueness, their mm -hmm. unfair advantage, if you may, their unique value proposition at every level. Mm -hmm. Because only when you discover your differentiate, and especially in your career, are you going to stand out from the rest. If you do not do that, you will look like everybody else. And looking like everybody else has never benefited anyone, especially if you are trying to move along in your mm -hmm. career. You need to look like you. You need to stand out from the rest. And even in a team, for the functionality of that team, we need individuals to be individuals. We need them to, to show up with, with what they bring to the team. Mm -hmm. So it is, I think for me, one of the most important things that you can do for yourself, finding okay. your X factor. Finding your X factor. Uh, yeah. th thank you very much, Anthony, for this particular conversation mm -hmm. and for taking your time to come onto the show. So where can people find you in case they want your services or they need to contact you for one reason or another? This is your camera. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to find me, you can go to www.theinfluential.co.ke. That is our website, theinfluential.co.ke. I am very active on LinkedIn. Uh, I am Anthony P. W. Ashira. Anthony P. W. Ashira. If you look me up, we can connect. I am uh, also active on Facebook as Anthony Wanjohi. There, the W is. <laughs> 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 yeah, I have many names. And uh, I'm also okay. active on Twitter as Anthony Ashira. Okay. But yes. All right. Thank you very much, Anthony. I've been calling you Anthony. It's supposed to be Anthony. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now I have it. So uh, <laughs> that has been Anthony Washira, a leadership transition coach, talking to us about finding your X factor. I hope you've taken something from that. You can uh, talk to us, tell us what that is on our social media handle at white 54 channel using the hashtag why in the morning uh, my personal handle is at stephanie ayeta so we'll be taking a short break and then brand sakwa will be back with more so don't switch that uh, dial